But this is an idea that I had just kind of in the last minute. Um, I've just kind of repot some of my tissue cultures into larger pots, and I figured somebody might want to see how I do that. So here I am. Uh, first thing I do is I knock all the dirt off of these. These are probably a month and a half out of uh, out of the flask. They're not bad size, right? Really pretty plants. <clears throat> but what I'm doing is gently pulling everything out. The squeaky toy is our puppy. So if you hear, hear that in the background, that's, that's our puppy. Being a puppy. I'm uh, pulling all of the... Just dirt really lightly off the roots. They just started to pop. You can see the... Uh, the white tips on the roots that are just starting to pop up. Let me get a better look in the camera here. Yeah. So that's good. Um, this soil was a little moist. I said that word, I really didn't mean to. As you can see, it almost kind of is just mud right now. And I want to get it in something a little fresher. So, these little guys, you don't even need any specialized tools. People think you need all these specialized tools to do this, and you so don't. Um, the smallest leaves, the more shriveled up ones, are the ones that were still on the plant when it was in, uh, in utero, I think that's called. In vitro, in utero. I can't remember what it's called with tissue cultures. <clears throat> and you could just pull those away with your fingers. You don't need to do anything crazy, sanitize anything. Just pull them away really gently. And every single leaf you pull away is a node and has the ability to push uh, roots out of it. So what I'm doing here is essentially pulling all the old leaves off and I'm going to bury the stem a little bit deeper to promote root growth out of those nodes. <laughs> right, so that's average. This is average. <laughs> All right, so I'm putting it in a pot this big. This is a really large pot, but I have air holes on the side. Uh, it dries out the, the soil a lot faster. So if you don't necessarily have a chunky mix to work with, uh, if that's too expensive around the area where you're from, you can use just regular potting soil. It's not really potting soil. It's kind of, uh, what I use is Fox Farm uh, Ocean Forest as a base, and I add perlite to that. So I would use potting soil and I would add perlite to that to make it the mix that I wanted. Perlite just kind of adds extra chunk, a little more moisture absorption, things like that. And then I also add in uh, Osmocote pellets to the actual mix. Here's the cool part. Nobody really uses these and I wonder why. There's these little spray bottles. And it's just, a lot of soil is hydrophobic right off the bat. So I get the surface with this before I do anything. It helps it hold its form when you're poking holes down in there for the plant to go down in. And it's not such a shock to the plant and you're not using really ridiculously wet soil right out of the, ba uh, right out of the gate. I just put it down in there really gently. Don't jam it in there. You don't want to break the roots or anything like that. But and then I just kind of move it in around it. Kind of collapse that hole in on the roots. And I'll water just a little bit more, but I'm not going to water a whole lot. I'm not going to saturate everything because I don't want this to become exactly what I just removed this from. This plant needs to learn how to uh, survive in soil or accustom itself to surviving in soil, drier soils, chunkier soils, instead of the stuff that uh, it was incubating in when it was just a fresh tissue culture. So I'll set this off to the side. I'll do another one. <clears throat> so it's just really, really saturated. It's been in there for a while. I'm, so, I'm surprised these actually were... We're still growing. 
grateful that they're still growing. Yep, they got the tips, the white tips right there. Put it against the black, it's a little easier to see. Those white tips on the roots right there. Actively growing, so they'll be okay. So now, a little specks of dirt off of here. Back to pulling those little leaves off. Not all of them. You can't, you can't take too many of these leaves off um, at once. You never want to take more than like 30% of a, a plant's foliage off in one sitting. It'll go into shock. The roots will, <laughs> the roots will recoil in horror. The plant will just stunt. So now you see I have like a nice stem where I pulled a few of the leaves uh, away. And each one of these little nodes here, some of them already do, have aerial roots coming out of them. If I can find it, there it is. There it is. And you bury this deeper down in, which justifies the taller uh, pot. I only have it buried like down in here. I don't, I don't bring it all the way to the rim. That would be just an absurd amount of dirt. <laughs> it's about down in here. And it's a, I think that's a good amount. That's just me personally, and this is just my own personal method. And I had uh, some premix down here. You can't see on camera, unfortunately. In here, again, this is the mix with the perlite and the Osmocote pellets, the Osmocote Plus, actually. Spray it down on the edges. My puppy is just running all over the place. The roots just down in there like that and collapse the dirt in around the roots to hold the plant in place. It's so hard to do this and hold it at the right angle so the camera can see it. <laughs> I need a third hand. I get a little crazy and a little, uh, I don't know, over, overly cautious with doing everything with it, patting every little bit down, making sure everything's just perfect. And the plant doesn't need that. Like, that's so unnecessary. It's just my, just my way of doing it. <laughs> I can't help it. There's only one way I'm able to do it. Knock the roots loose. Do they look good? They have the white tips. They do. They are not as white as I'd like them, which is why we're moving them into better soil. Because this was junk. <clears throat> Let's pull these leaves off before I go get it. And always start at the lowest. Pull down and away. Down and away. That was a lot I took off of that one, but it was... I'm going to take another one. I'm going to take another one. You can see the, there's an aerial root right here already forming. That's, that's okay. I took another one. It needed it. That, late, that uh, leaf was really, really bad. It was teeny tiny and curled and... The plant would have spent more ma more energy trying to keep it up than it would have just popped out a new one. Sometimes that's the sacrifice you have to make, and it's a choice you have to make too. Kind of steal yourself to make sure you're uh, able to cut when you need to. <laughs> Tiny little new growth right there. See what happens to you. Down the hole it goes. Move the soil in around it.
move on to the next one. And some people don't choose to use soil. Some people use uh, sphagnum moss. I use sphagnum moss a lot, actually. And that soil was really, really damp. Uh, it, it's there's nothing I have ever used that roots anything better than sphagnum moss roots plants. It's just insane how how well it works and how fast it works. It's unbelievable. Like certain things, people are telling me certain things are really difficult to root, and I'm like, give it, give it to me. I, I guarantee I'll get you to I'll get it to root. I promise you. But we all work with what's familiar to us and your particular way of doing it might be better than mine because your environment might be different than mine. Environment plays a large role. You can have all the plant care tips in the world and it's not going to help you if you're not making the proper adjustments to your own environment. You can say, oh, this is bright and direct light and that's every single plant in the world needs a bright and direct light. Or is this is this a good place? Is a bathroom a good place for this? I, I don't know. I've, I haven't been in your bathroom. I don't know what the light's like. <laughs> so there's a lot to there's a lot to factor in when you're when you're acclimating plants to your own area or you're using um, mediums and soils in different regions like i i live in i think it's 6b i think it's 6b i live in ohio and i find sphagnum moss doesn't dry out that fast but if i was in the southwest it would probably dry out a lot faster because it's a more arid environment so uh, maybe i would lean towards using lika or, or something like that something that actually almost hydroponic But I just work. I just work with this because I I know it. Well, hello, puppy. Just pull these bottom leaves away. What's the matter, baby? Huh? The puppy's whining in my ear, wanting my attention. There's a lot of extra growths on here. I'm pulling those off because I just want the plant to focus on its current crown. It's a lot of leaves that I just pulled off of there. But each one of them already has root starts on them or underneath them. So that's going to be buried quite a bit down into the soil that I'm about to fill up this cup with. You'll see. Like this is probably going to go all the way almost to the bottom. I'm going to hit oil. Yep, that's good. Okay. Going down. There it is. Plant is not as tall, but it's more, it's gonna throw a lot more uh, roots out. So uh, it will be a much healthier plant. Last one, and I will stop boring you with me talking. Roots are good. Hold on, puppy. We're almost done. Hold on. I know. All this new growth. 
I wish it would just focus on its central crown. That would be nice. Alright, that's the last one I'll take off. This one has a big leaf getting ready to come out. <coughs> you sit there. Ah, caved in on me already. That's fine. This one's going deep too. There we go. And if you were wondering, these were or I haven't mentioned it either. <laughs> uh, these are white princess philodendron. Some of these are low variegation. Some are medium. Not really crazy. But yeah, that's essentially what I do. I'll move these into the larger ones. These will grow in here probably until they're pretty tall. And then I'll move them over to the pint glasses because these are 12 ounce glasses. I'll move them to this size, which is just a little bit larger. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you. Uh, hit like and subscribe and that little bell icon too. That helps out. Uh, if you want to hang out, uh, I'll be doing a lot more of these. So thanks for hanging out.